Uh, Heidi and welcome everyone uh, in all of the different time zones that we're meeting. Uh, if I can get my slides up, I'm going to talk to you initially around the Genomics and Health Implementation Forum uh, because with the development of the Global Alliance standards, uh, what we found early on is that it's no use developing standards uh, unless we're getting people to use them. And certainly initially we looked at what is the most effective way uh, to be linking into um, all of the different initiatives that are happening. And certainly do, uh, felt that the most effective way was to do that at a country by country level. Um, and that led to the development of the national initiatives. Next slide. So what are we trying to do here? Um, you've probably seen this before, but I love this depiction of all of the different aspects of genomics from the data donor, whether it's um, a patient or a member of the general public, through everything from consent, the sequencing, the ethics, uh, how we uh, analyze the data, and then up in the top right hand corner, how we're sharing, analyzing, retrieving data sets, both for clinical care and for research. Next. And what you see here is that from the Global Alliance perspective, uh, we have developed standards along this entire pipeline with the goal of responsible sharing of both clinical and genomic data for applications in both clin clinical and research work. Next. But then what do we do with it? How do we get it out there to be used? And a lot of our focus over the last couple of years has been on the left side of the screen with our technical work streams that are now churning out standards across all of those different areas. And we started a number of years ago with drivers, driver projects, uh, which on the right are real world applications of genomics across initially rare disease and cancer were the primary focuses as they had the biggest impact from a clinical care perspective, but then expanding that out so that we're now looking at complex traits and infectious disease and at basic biology. And what's been great about this interplay between the driver projects on one hand and the technical work streams on the other is that there is a, you know, bilateral communication. Um, you can see on the right, and I can speak from my personal experience leading Australian genomics, is that at each stage, as we were building our national effort in genomics, we were talking with the technical work streams, telling them what our needs are, and then working with them to develop the standards that we need, and then applying them in real time. And that has ended up being a wonderful discourse back and forward, so that as we developed our national um, data infrastructure, it's incorporating all of these standards to ensure that what we're doing is interoperable and that we're all speaking the same language. Next. What became increasingly obvious though, is that you know before 2015, we were generating most of our genomes within research, uh, but really we're predicting that uh, by 2025, we'll have at least 60 million uh, genomes that are generated in clinical practice. And we need to be able to harness that information so that we can use it uh, to improve the accuracy of clinical diagnosis, uh, but also that uh, we can use it for our research for gene discovery and for therapeutics in particular. Next. So this led to the pathway of how do we best bring our standards out into the community. And Mark Caulfield from Genomics England and I have chaired these meetings over the years since 2016, uh, initially called the National Initiatives. Uh, and it really started as a bit of show and tell of what different countries were doing as they were setting up their national genomics initiatives. Uh, you see that we became virtual as we, everything has in 2020. But it really got to the point that as we're bringing more countries on, and our goal is to have every country in the world participating in this, is that we needed to do something to take this to scale. And so in 2020, we formalised the Genomics and Health Implementation Forum to bring together all of these national initiatives, uh, as, as well as large, uh, large programs 
uh, that are generating genomics for its application into clinical practice. Next. So why? We want to ensure that all of our standards are fit for purpose across lots of different medical systems and research systems. For example, in Australia, we have a federated national uh, medical system, but it's very different from say the US medical system. So we need to make sure that our standards are fit for purpose. It also really makes us a truly global organization as we can bring in, um, in countries and work with them at whatever stage they are in developing their genomics initiatives. It's also scalable. We couldn't have every country in the world as a driver project of the Global Alliance. But this is a way we're now forming a community of all of the countries and the national initiatives um, that we can bring together so that we have continue this continuous discourse between the development of standards and their application in real practice. And most importantly, it's a mechanism for bringing the standards uh, and the needs to the work streams for further development so that we have iterative improvement over time. Next. So our major goal of GIF is the implementation and development of Global Alliance standards. But what we have found is that it's been an incredible community to bring together, to share best practices, the challenges, things like public engagement. Um, we had a great session on how do you respond to um, data breaches, for example, and make sure that you're engaging the community. Um, there's opportunities around education and we have an international education focus, uh, but also looking at the different regulatory requirements across different countries and looking at how we can solve the ability to share data across different borders. It also allows us to identify areas for collaboration and sharing of our resources and expertise across countries. And so we've been developing, and we hear about today, some pilot projects for global data sharing uh, using large scale cohorts. Next. So this is our current um, GIF members, uh, and we're really very keen for all of you involved in national initiatives um, and large genome projects around the world uh, to join into this membership. Next. What I'll just give you an example here, and I talked about what we've done in Australia before, and I'm just going to show you a, a few examples of the sharing that we've done. Uh, this is where all the, uh, the standards are applied. And next, this is a much less beautiful um, representation, next slide, of the Australian genomics um, data workflow that we've developed over the last couple of years, and we're now refining this. Um, but you can see from everything from the clinical consultation through to the genomics data repository and how we reanalyze data, all of the Global Alliance logos where we're applying the standards. Uh, and it's really uh, ensured that we have international best practice established in our country and also that we're interoperable with other national initiatives. Next. Another great example that's just recently been published, um, hot off the press in September 2021, uh, is a collaboration between Genomics England and Australian Genomics. Uh, Genomics England had developed uh, Panel App, which is a, a fabulous tool for virtual gene panel curation uh, by ensuring that we have an evidence base for gene disease associations, allowing us to prioritise the bioinformatic analysis um, of whole genome sequencing. And this is now developed into a, a great exchange of information. Uh, and it's also allowed to us to refine when there's been discrepant gene disease associations. And now we have monthly joint meetings so that we can continually keep this updated. And again, this is uh, an application um, that we're very willing to share and work with other countries to apply because it increases the um, it certainly increases the efficiency of gene curation. Next. Another example uh, of what we're doing is providing practical guidelines for quality control of whole genome sequencing results, uh, because as well as making sure we're speaking the same language, we need to make sure that we have similar quality in our uh, genomic data outputs. 
and we're proposing, uh, this was proposed at a meeting in 2020 and now a working group has got together and really delivering um, some, some great results. Next. We also on the website uh, have a GIF or an implementation, implementation toolkit. And so all of that shared knowledge I talked about, whether it's around clinical tools, minimum clinical data sets required to analyze a genome, technical data tools, the standards and how to apply them, uh, examples around uh, population engagement and media uh, and the phrasing that you need to use, you, you can use the consent tools um, and clauses that you can apply in your own country, educational material uh, and continually updated genomic knowledge. Next. So the benefits, I hope I've, I've demonstrated that membership has its benefits. Uh, there's a, a really great global community of global learning. Uh, you can contribute and benefit and apply Global Alliance standards. We provide access to tools, potentials for collaboration and sharing, and also great pilot projects that really accelerate our ability uh, to discover new genes um, by, by sharing our data. Next. So becoming an, a GIF member is easy. There's a short form uh, that's in the implementation tab on the Global Alliance website. So it's a very short form, but we really welcome um, uh, you joining us and also giving us an idea of what technical standards of policy frameworks that you've adopted or would like to adopt. Next. Uh, we also have a monthly newsletter, which is around topics that we um, find people have a greatest interest in. Um, so we continually provide those updates on a monthly basis um, and links into resources that you can use. And you can again subscribe to that through the Global Alliance website, um, but you'll automatically get it um, as a member of GIF. Next. So um, we have our next GIF meeting, um, a workshop over two days, uh, hopefully in a, uh, a time zone that should shoot uh, suit most of you on uh, the 16th and 17th of November. So scan that QR code now because you can register. And again, it's been really going to be focusing on practical approaches to applying Global Alliance standards, uh, but really sharing our knowledge uh, in across many different areas and a number of great uh, collaborations have arisen out of GIFT and will continue to do so. Okay, so that's it from me. And now I have a great pleasure of sh chairing a session um, looking at real world implementation of, uh, of the Global Alliance standards. And this is a great way to give you a flavour of the power of these standards uh, 